Hi. Uh, so uh, welcome to the tutorial on rampant plunge toolpath for CNC milling operation, right? So when you want to cut a profile like this, um, the CNC machine, uh, first you need to plunge to the depth of cut and then you need to machine the profile. Uh, but but the, there is a problem. The one problem with the spindle tool is if you look at the end mill, um, the velocity of the tool is even the spindle is even though rotating at a high RPM, the velocity of the any point on the tool is basically V is equal to R omega. Uh, so what happens is the periphery of the tool is at a very high RPM, moving at a very high speed, no problem. But towards the center of the tool, the, where the radius is so small, um, I'm talking about the center of the tool or you know, just plus minus 0.5 mm around the tool, the radius is so small that the velocity of the tool at those points is very small. Uh, as a result, the linear velocity is very small. So if when the tool tries to plunge into the, this is the workpiece, uh, when the tool tries to plunge into the workpiece, it is easily able to remove the material in the green zone, but it really struggles to remove the material from the red zone. Uh, so, so, what so as you go down, what happens? There is a lot of force. Uh, if you look at this uh, diagram, this is a typical spindle holding a tool. So, as it moves down, because of this, uh, because the center is not able to remove the material easily you experience a lot of force in this direction from the workpiece to the tool, uh, which either can you know, cause the tool to break or uh, it can cause, uh, because the typ typically the spindle mount is cantilevered, so it can cause the spindle to tilt like this. Uh, I have exaggerated in this figure, but you get the idea, particularly in low cost tabletop CNC machines, which are not so rigid. Uh, these kind of forces will cause problems. Either it will break the tool or it will cause the spindle to twist and tilt. And so what will happen is you are, you are trying to drill a simple hole like this, but uh, because of this tilt, the hole, uh, you know, you get some extra pro projections like this. Or if you are trying to plunge, you are trying to plunge here and then cut a circle, uh, actually you will notice that, that the starting point, the tool has deviated a bit and it has created a unnecessary, unwanted projection like this, right? Um, so these are the problems uh, when we use directly when you try to uh, plunge into the workpiece with the tool. Even though, the, I mean, it is as if, imagine you are switching off the spindle and then trying to move down, right? Because effectively, the, when, when you do that, basically the tool is going to break or... Um, as I said, yeah, definitely the tool will break if the spindle is off or there will be too much force like this and it will be twisting the z-axis and affecting your accuracy and so on. So at the center, effectively, the tool is switched off because the radius is zero, even though the spindle is off. So what do we do? How do we solve this problem? Um, so that is where, imagine um, this is the end mill um, and P0 is the center point of the end mill and PA, PB, PC, PD are the peripheral points of the end. So as we discussed, if you go straight down, the P0 has to remove material and we don't want to do that. I mean, it, the, the, the spindle is not able to do that. So what do we do? We try to cut as much as possible, remove material as much as possible with the periphery of the tool, not with the center point of the tool. So for that, uh, what we do is normally when we drill, uh, A1 is the point at the top of the surface, top surface of the workpiece, and A3 is the bottom surface of the workpiece. Okay. Um, so normally the toolpath is you plunge, you plunge straight down from A1 to A3, in which case P0 also has to remove the material. So instead of that, what we do is we go from A1 to B2, where B is a point at the approximately the middle layer of the workpiece. And then we come back to uh, from B2 to A3. And then we start cutting. Um, so what happens is when we go from A1 to B2, it is the PA edge, which is basically removing the material, right? 
And when we come from B2 to A3, it is the PB edge of the tool, which is removing the material and not the P0 point. Um, so, uh, so similarly, if you apply this to the, so that is what is called rampant plunge. The tip of the tool, instead of moving from A1 to A3 directly, it will go from A1 to B2, from B2 to A3, then it will continue cutting. So if you, let's imagine we are cutting a square, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, A. These are points on the square, okay? So let's say my starting point is A, okay? So normal tool path is I go uh, to A, I go to A1 is where I start, that is the top of this material. Then I directly plunge to A3. Then I cut B, C, D, E, F, back to A. So the normal tool path is like this, uh, A1, then I plunge to A3, then I keep cutting C3, D3, E3, F3, A3, then I will lift out. And this is here, the, this path has a problem as we discussed, that it applies a lot of force on the tool. Instead, uh, we apply this method of ramp and plunge tool path. So here what we do is, we go from A1 to B2, then from B2, we come to A3, then we cut C3, D3, E3, F3, A3. So the path is A1, B2, A3, C3, D3, E3, F3, A3, right? Similarly, if you're cutting a circle, uh, we go from A1 to B2, back to A3, then C3, D3, E3. So in this method, we have ensured that the cutting, all the cutting happens with the periphery of the tool and not with the center of the tool. Uh, you need a computerized software to, it's not easy to write a G code for this. Uh, so you need a computer, you need a CAM software which has this future uh, inbuilt uh, that can automatically generate this G code particularly for complex shapes that you are trying to cut. So let's see how to do that in the multi-CNC software. So this is the multi-CNC software. I'll just uh, start it fresh. I'm starting the multi-CNC software. And um, let's say I want to cut a simple square. Um, of 50 by 50 size. Okay. So I enter the depth of the material, incremental and final is 6 mm. Uh, the parameters, you can keep the same. I'm using a tool of 3 mm diameter, so I'm doing offset. And uh, then I'm there is a feature in this called ramp and plunge, right? End mills are not suitable for drilling holes. If this option is enabled, uh, it says plunging will happen in a milling action instead of drilling straight down. Uh, that's what we saw. And then we are using the zigzag option where we go from A to B back to A. That's why it's called a zigzag. Uh, don't worry about this zig only. That's used for some other operation. Uh, this is the distance between A and B. Uh, right? So... Uh, and then you can give OK. So we can um, save this. Uh, path. And uh, here you can see if you open the G code that Z is gradually going from Z0 to Z minus six. Uh, so it will be easy to visualize if you simulate the tool path. So if, you, if I'm simulating the tool path, you will see that the tool goes here, comes back, again it goes initially. Right? It went there, I came back, then it is now doing the outer operation. So let's see that again in single step mode. Uh, so I'm just single stepping through the G code. So goes to the starting point. 
then you can see that the z is gradually going from 0 to minus 6. Uh, so for example, uh, now z equal to minus 3. This is the point B. The point A is the starting point. Now it has come to point B, point B2 actually, where z is minus 3. And again, it's going back to the point A. And now the z is minus 6. Now it has reached A3 actually. Now it will continue cutting the at a 6 mm depth of cut. So I'll change to continuous. And you can see that all along z is minus 6. And it is with this cut. Uh, so similarly, if you uh, set, uh, for a circle, uh, ramp and plunge, uh, same thing. You can do multiple, uh, multi to multiple paths also. For example, here I'm using well uh, depth of cut. So the tool path is generated. So I can save this. Save it. Now, if I simulate this, you will see that it will gradually go to minus go here, and it took minus three, then again it comes back to A3. Now it's minus six, and then it will continue the Then when it comes here, again, it will go to do a rampant plunge operation to go to minus 12. Because now Z is at minus 6. So after reaching here, again, it will go to uh, this point and come back this point. And by that time, it will be at Z equal to minus 12. And then it will continue the Z minus 12. So again, you can see that it will go front and come back. Yeah. Now it's minus 12. Now at minus 12, it is continuing the cutting. So that is how rampant plunge uh, is possible in the multi-CNC software. Um, it is all other softwares also uh, have this provision. For example, Fusion 360 also, there is a rampant plunge uh, operation uh, that you can select uh, during the generation of the G-code. So to summarize, um, rampant plunge is a, method, is a tool part method which allows you to are uh, to proper uh, milling operation on a CNC machine without causing excessive uh, forces to the tool, uh, tool and breaking the tool and so on. And your geometry is much more neat. Um, we are basically ensuring that we cut with the periphery of the tool and not with the center of the tool. That's the basic concept of rampant pitch. Okay. Thank you.